Uh, T-Town Lake Reservation is a member-funded organization. It started as uh, land donated by the Swopes to um, the Brooklyn Botanical Gardens. And it started at about 250 acres or so. Across the street was the uh, Croft, which was the Swopes' house. And uh, now that is part of uh, T-Town. When, when I started going to T-Town back in the 80s, it was uh, still under 300 acres, and it's since it's more than tripled in size. Up in these pines, sometimes you get pine warblers breeding. Uh, this, this is a bird of T-Town right here. Um, it was uh, at uh, the Swopes Feeder for a few months back in 1954, a loser's woodpecker. And so you could say it was on T-Town property, but it wasn't T-Town property at the time. And uh, here's uh, some of the data. Started uh, 245 acres in 63. And um, you could find that online. T-Town has a strong stewardish uh, section now. They, they have a number of people working on restoration. And so they're in the middle of restoring the meadows up at Cliffdale. And uh, this shows how far back I go. This is, uh, I had one a year earlier. But Kentucky Warbler was the uh, first bird and the first time I talked to uh, Tom Burke um, reporting a, a rare bird sighting. And he said, oh, I had two that day at uh, Rye Nature Center. So it was a big migration day. And uh, there's uh, a friend of mine took this, uh, Kathy Malone, um, uh, down south. But I just thought it was an excellent shot. So T-Town is uh, south of the uh, New Croton Reservoir. And um, it's got a number of protected land there. I think the water mass helps concentrate birds. Um, and... Um, they, they have a number of trails that intersect uh, T-Town Lake Reservation. So one that they started a few years ago is over six miles. And you can see the red uh, heavy marked border will go all the way to Kichewan. And uh, you hit different habitats with there. It's really uh, uh, a nice hike and, and some great areas to see. Um, T-Town Lake has uh, on eBird is listed as 190 species. And um, it's over 200 because not all the birds are entered. They've had, uh, on the T-Town bird checklist, they've had uh, white winged scoter there and uh, white ibis. Um, used to have uh, ring neck pheasants breeding there. Um, you know, so these, these birds aren't on the, uh, the checklist or the Lewis's. Um, Cliffdale Farm has recently been separ separated off from T-Town as a hotspot. And that's about uh, two to 300 acres. Um, that was donated in 92 by uh, Marion Askely, who owned the estate there. And um, it's different habitat. It's If you don't know it, it's a great place. Uh, place. I think it's one of Steve Rappaport's favorite place. So this is a map of T-Town in the 90s. And uh, this is just after Cliffdale Farm on the left was joined. And uh, one of my old favorite place used to be on the right was Hidden Valley. And the habitat has changed greatly since the 80s. And I'll get into that. And now one of my favorite uh, hikes is the uh, called the Back 40. It's this long piece on the south of the, the bottom of the map um, that connects to Route 134. And uh, the prop, um, here, I'll skip that. The property to the left here is Glendale Swamp, and there's no trails in there. And... Um, they did have reports of uh, breeding least flycatchers years ago, uh, swamp sparrows. Um, but uh, the last time I went in, I got covered with ticks and um, I haven't been back. But, um, 
Well, this one kind of jumped out of um, out of place. This is uh, green heron, and they they nest at Tea Town. Here's a Tea Town map uh, presently, and they've recently added uh, uh, more property. Um, so you can see these uh, uh, red sections. This is added property or easements. All this down on the bottom. This whole section, they added two lakes from the uh, the Swopes Estate. And uh, that was uh, uh, purchased by donors, uh, 77 acres. And then part of it, um, to make it more than 77 acres, uh, was DEC property up by Shadow Lake that was linked in. And then you could see to the right in Hidden Valley, they added... Uh, more property into. Uh, this is just recently, um, T-Town is always in flux. So um, they drained the lake to, um, to repair the dam and to install a, a, a pipe that kept on clogging. So um, that's why we had all the eagles there. Uh, the lake is filling up again, the pipe was replaced and uh, they may raise the level of the lake now. If uh, people have been there, they'd see that uh, there's a lot of good marsh around there and good areas for uh, shorebirds to work the edges. Um, breeding birds. Um, this used to be a breeding bird at T-Town back. Uh, it's on the 94 list, but I think it was more uh, in the 70s when it was still breeding. A grouse. We're still breeding in the early 90s, and they disappeared. Uh, maybe the last sighting, I don't know if you know, Ann, was like 99 in, uh, in the T-Town area. Um, they disappeared very quickly. Uh, Northern water thrush used to breed there. Um, there's a chance that they could still attempt it again, but they haven't been recorded in a number of years. Um, Hidden Valley was a gem. They had over 300-year-old hemlocks back there, a virgin hemlock forest, and uh, most all of them are dead. And, and at the time, that changed the habitat there with these massive hemlocks um, for wintering birds and uh, breeding birds. And uh, there's other birds that probably um, wasn't birded hard enough to find, a Cadian flycatcher. A winter wren used to be breed there until uh, the early 2000s in Hidden Valley. Um, we've had in the past um, white eye vireos breeding on the power lines. A brown creeper um, may still breed there, but I haven't seen one on T-Town property in a number of years uh, during breeding season. Um, when I first started going in the 80s, there were three different spots where I found uh, Canada warblers. Griffin Swamp, um, the old back 40 uh, power line cut. There was a swamp there that the beavers took over and flooded. Um, but the, there's been great changes since the 80s, and, and a lot of that was caused by the deer. Um, Chestnut sided used to, to breed in Hidden Valley side and the power lines. I, I haven't found them breeding in a number of years. Uh, Black-throated greens um, in, in the forest. And I, I don't know if anybody's found them breeding in uh, over 10 years. Um, there's um, over 14 miles of trails at T-Town. Um, the uh, lakeside trail of blue is 1.3 miles around. And um, I think the acreage of the lake is about 29 acres. Um, but it's a great place uh, to bird in the, in the early spring. Um, and I like to bird on the sunny, sunny edges. And then um, on the opposite side is Hidden Valley. And they added 30 acres up here, which is called Overlook in the yellow. And then uh, the Three Lakes Trail which um, uh, loops around and, um, and goes off property to pick up with another trail, the Peekskill uh, Briarcliff Trail cuts through T-Town. So you can go from, uh, from Briarcliff all the way up to Peekskill on that trail. Uh, Cliffdale Farm 
uh, 200 acres and there's a connector trail that brings you back to T-Town. Um, we're going to start with Cliffdale Farms. Um, we don't have a lot of, um, of farm habitat anymore, open grasslands. And uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens with the, uh, the grasslands. Um, one thing that um, a lot of birders uh, notice is that you have these hedgerows, and it's a great place to find birds working down the hedgerow. This is a, a classroom building. Um, this parking, and is, parking lot is closed. There's this little parking lot. They don't charge here. Um, it'll only hold about six cars, but, uh, it, you know, if you go early in the morning, there's, uh, it's usually pretty empty. And um, you could walk to the left of the building. We'll bring you down towards a field and uh, the Indian uh, village that's for education. Or if you walk to the right, there's a trail that cuts down the hill that can bring you back to the power lines. So this is a uh, part of the meadows. Um, it's, um, it's also up on a hill, so it's a good place to watch for migration. I've seen Brant flying by on, over the Hudson River from here. Um, it, it's, uh, a lot of birders come out here. There's a lot of brush and understory. Um, uh, this old apple orchard is, is a trail going right down by the house and uh, you pull a lot of birds. And this year I did a program and right to the right of this uh, person in green was where a, um, a woodcock was coming out every night and doing its dance and uh, uh, pinting and uh, flight. And then uh, the old uh, chicken yard is overgrown and that'll hold some birds too. A couple of years ago, we had blue wing warbler breed in there. Um, in the evening, uh, great horned owls nest, uh, they're nesting somewhere down past the, that barn. And uh, cedar waxwings have been recorded nesting there before. In migration, I get uh, night hawks flying over. Um, T-Town in the evening in uh, late August or uh, September. It's one of the best places in Westchester to find migrating olive-sided flycatchers. Um, uh, those hedgerows, they like to perch up on top of the trees for a good sight line. Uh, it's, it's a better place at uh, T-Town to find Lincoln sparrows in migration. And this is that woodcock that was very cooperative for uh, a woodcock walk I led there in the spring. And um, pretty much any time in, uh, in March, once the snow melts, um, you can find them. Um, barn swallows still nest in the barn there. Um, chimney swifts seem to come to Cliffdale for about a week or two to feed before they migrate south. So if you see the them leave the colony at Croton Point, they may be heading over to feed over at, uh, at Cliffdale. Uh, there's a number of bluebird boxes up there. It's a great place to look for bluebirds, um, tree swallows. Um, okay, now I'm jumping, switching gears. Um, at T-Town has um, a, a bird loop that has um, birds that can't be released. They have an eagle, they have vultures, um, uh, some owl species. They, they got a, a new porcupine. And it's a short loop right by the main building. And since they feed their uh, raptors, um, uh, dead rodents, um, it's a great place to see wild um, turkey vultures and black vultures. They'll come and they'll sit on top of the cages trying to figure out how to get the food. And uh, white crowns um, also pass through on the power lines or up at Cliffdale is a better place to see them. Um, field sparrows nest up at um, Cliff Cliffdale and on the power lines. Um, Cliffdale has, uh, has had Cerulean uh, spotted there the last couple of years, and they may have attempted breeding by Vernet Lake a few years ago. 
There's a number of oak trees, and there's also an area up in Cliffdale with uh, black locust. And black locust is a southern species that they're they're familiar with in in breeding. Uh, they like black locust for some reason. And um, the largest colony I know up in Putnam County is uh, a mature black locust. Um, this is a trail sign at Cliffdale. And this is a trail that connects down to the power lines and to Griffin Swamp. Um, this is a good area in the evening to listen for barred owls calling. Um, just last week uh, in this uh, barberry down in the valley, um, we had uh, winter wren come up. Um, we've had wood thrush nest in the barberry and we had a uh, hooded warbler uh, for two years in a row. And the last time I found them was two years ago down in Griffin Swamp calling. Uh, so the uh, possible breeder. Um, this is the entrance to Hidden Valley. It's uh, across from the lakeside parking lot. And uh, it loops through the, uh, the old hemlock for forest. There's still some hemlocks back there. There's uh, some smaller open fields that have kind of been squeezed in, but um, we had uh, uh, one, one of the best woodcock sightings I had there. A uh, winter wren, it's, it used to breed in this, stream, uh, this uh, cascading stream down in Hidden Valley uh, up to less than 10 years ago, probably. Uh, barred owl, uh, this was taken on my survey um, down in, uh, in, by Griffin Swamp this year for breeding birds. Um, I found a, a pretty likely cavity uh, down there. Uh, warm eating uh, still breed at Tea Town, but in really reduced numbers. I think we had two nests in the last year. Um, and this was right by the side of the trail walking um, into Hidden Valley, Woodcock. And it, it was a bird walk I was leading, and everybody got a pretty good view of a woodcock on the ground. And this is a dying hemlock forest. You can see how thin the, uh, the uh, branches are, and a lot of them are dead in the lower part. And, um, you know, there's some I see uh, doing a little better. Maybe when they're thinned out, the, uh, the woolly adelgids aren't, uh, aren't able to spread as quickly when they, they get hit by a, a cold event that uh, kills them back. Um, oven birds. Um, when I first started going into um, to Tea Town, they were deafening and they were everywhere. I, I found countless nests on the ground, um, and now there's only a few. And a lot of that is because um, the understory just disappeared. Um, they have a, a program to to help lower the deer prop population. And deer, if they come across the ground nesting birds, will eat the, the eggs of the young birds because they are starving for uh, calcium. Uh, pine warblers, uh, best place to find them is right by the, uh, the, uh, the main building in the white pines of the Norway down below. Um, a common yellow throat still, still nests there. Um, so another wax wing um, over by uh, Vernet Lake. Um, this is um, Aurelia, Japanese Aurelia. And it's, um, it grows along the power lines by, um, by below Vernet Lake. Um, they're trying to remove it because it's an invasive. And across on the hillside, it, it's, it's overwhelmed with this, I call it the Aurelia forest. And I also call it crack for birds. Um, I have people who go to Rockefeller, it's one of the best places to find, uh, find warblers or indigo buntings and migration. And the best way to access it is from Route 134 off, off of T-Town property and, and walk the power lines down until you see Aurelia. 
and um, you'll find um, uh, in late August uh, through the month of September into October, you'll find uh, warblers and thrushes. It's the best place to see uh, um, K May warblers and uh, Swainson thrushes. Uh, uh, Yeah, black poles, uh, black throated blues. I've had them there up into uh, middle of November. In fact, a, a number of years ago, uh, I had five species of warblers, in, including a uh, oven bird in Aurelia Forest. Um, uh, Grosbeaks uh, feed on the power lines um, by the uh, Vernet Lake Swamp. Um, you got flickers, there's a lot of dead trees there. Uh, Tohi still nest there. Um, we've had in the past, they don't nest every year, but they were seen a number of times at T-Town this year. Um, they possibly could have nested uh, brown thrashers. Uh, this is a lower lakeside parking lot. You access this from Blinn Road. And um, uh, for non-members, they do charge now uh, for parking. Uh, it's the honor system. Um, and uh, gives you access to the lake. Um, so um, great blue herons uh, are there, uh, may still be there um, in open water. Um, it's uh, in full migration uh, with the water level down and all the, uh, a lot of native plants and insects in the, uh, in the shoreline, um, I had flocks of 30, 40 um, palm warblers. Um, mute swans did nest there, and uh, they've disappeared because they had a, uh, a bout with a blue-green algae that uh, poisoned the mute swans. Uh, this was a photo from T-Town. Um, spotted sandpipers are regular in the spring and fall, as well as um, as well as solitary sandpipers. Um, ducks breed there, these are uh, young mallards. Um, another duck that disappeared from breeding at T-Town um, was black duck. I haven't seen that there for a while. Osprey, they, uh, they're regular at T-Town um, fishing. This is taken, this shot is taken at T-Town. Uh, wood ducks are a very common breeder there and uh, you may still find them in the beaver swamp in the open water sometimes this time of year. Um, I had ruddy duck there this year. It's, uh, these are all ducks that are just passing through. Uh, I've had blue winged teal there before. Um, this year, I was out with Sean Camilleri and had my first red-throated loon at T-Town in a uh, in long time birding there. And that same day, we had a, a marsh wren on the power lines that Sean found. Uh, pintail, um, I had one on a Christmas count, one little patch of open water. Um, I've seen shovelers there before. Ringneck ducks uh, are regular spring and fall. Gadwall flying away is, um, is more spring bird when water opens up. Um, uh, loons, my first five years going to T-Town every year, there was a loon that came back every year. Um, so in May, you could find a, uh, a common loon, but I haven't seen that for a while. But uh, double-crested cormorants, there's a big rock out there that I like to sit on and, and feed. But this year, they didn't because they drained the lake and they killed uh, most, of the, most of the fish washed down to the reservoir. And uh, since they did it again, it's going to take another couple of years for the fish to increase in size. Uh, Hodemergansers are there uh, spring and fall. Uh, that's the second ruddy. Uh, Vernet Lake is a deeper lake, um, and I've had widgeon there when it first opens up. Um, this is taken lakeside a couple of years ago. I was with Larry Trackenberg, and we had a really cold May, and there was um, no insects. Um, a lot of the leaves were killed, and we had a flock of about nine or ten scarlet tangers feeding on the shoreline of uh, T-Town Lake. So it's, it's worth uh, 1.3 miles. It's worth walking uh, around that in the spring. 
um, where it crosses the power lines are, are two of the more active spots. Uh, blue wing tail, seen there before, green wing tail. Uh, they were probably there this fall when they dropped the lake level. I, um, they like feeding in the shallow muds, mud, and they'll get them um, by Wildflower Island in Gadwall. Kingfisher is regular there. Um, here is uh, Wildflower Island. It's a two-acre island, and um, it um, has understory and plants that all of T-Town used to have. It's protected by a beaver fence and a deer fence. Um, and it, uh, it you need uh, to pay to go out there on weekends. They have programs, uh, but they have over 130 species of, of flowers and, and plants that used to grow th throughout our woods. And this is a look out to the lake in a beaver hutch that uh, uh, might have been uh, drained out of their home. And uh, this is a bridge to T-Town, uh, to Wildflower Island. And, um, and this marsh area, uh, last year I had a Virginia rail call from there. Um, it's a great place to bird. There's a little bird blind here. Um, there, that's where that bird was supposed to be. There's, it's the best place to see green herons uh, hunting. And uh, there was a young that was with it this year. And this is a duck blind in Wildflower Woods right next to that bridge. And um, I've seen bittern from here, uh, both teal, shovelers. Um, they're going to bring the water level back out, up, so it's going to change this habitat. But um, a couple of times, um, well, right from that area, we had uh, that nest is at T-Town, uh, below eye levels. of uh, Orioles nest around the lake. Um, this is taken from that blind uh, in migration. The best time to hit that blind is when the sun starts hitting this area. And then the birds will get more active, the insects gets, get, get active, and uh, they start feeding there. Um, uh, Nat catchers breed right around there. Uh, swamp sparrows are bred in that area. And this bird uh, was seen by a number of people, Connecticut warbler, and that was taken right from inside the blind. Um, I think I was shaking so much, that's why it's blurry. Um, across the street from the T-Town building is the access to Vernay Lake and the Three Lakes Trail, which uh, Shadow Lake is up on the top of the hill, and that's very underbirded up there. And uh, sometimes you'll get birds right in this brushy area here, uh, especially in migration. Uh, this is Vernay Lake. Um, it's a deeper lake, so you get some um, other ducks in here. You could also see uh, green herons in here. Um, this is another view of it. And just below that is, uh, is on the power lines and an overlook, and from this overlook, I've had, uh, had uh, yellow belly uh, flycatcher, uh, morning warbler, um, number of, I, recently I had winter wren from there. This is where we had the marsh wren down here. And the hummingbirds are regular feeding there. It's a good place in the end of July for both water thrushes. Um, they're earlier migrants, um, so I, gotten a real good view of Louisiana wa water thrush and uh, northern wash water thrush will stay later. Another place with uh, to view uh, ruby-throated hummingbirds are in wildflower woods because it's protected from uh, deer. There's a big stand of, uh, of touch-me-nots um, there and uh, hummingbirds uh, love to feed on them. Um, a prothonotary warbler, there's a beaver swamp there. They're moving north. Uh, this is a, a hope of mine and put a box up for them. And the one recorded sighting was next to Ver Vernay Lake uh, a few years ago by Hillary Siner. And this is a, a look at the upper end from the spillway of that beaver swamp. And because of the drought this year, 
this was all water and it filled in with a lot of different uh, weed seeds and was just loaded with goldfinch, purple finch, and sparrows. Uh, red shoulder hawks breed down there. Uh, this is uh, the marsh, wasn't the marsh run we saw, but that was down there this year. Um, it's a great place in the fall and maybe uh, early spring for rusty blackbirds. This is taken in that swamp, that photo. And this one is also a beautiful bird. Um, the, the mockingbirds breed on the power lines. The reason why I threw this in, it was taken uh, less than a week ago. Um, sapsucker may become a breeder there. Um, they're common in the winter. Though my last half dozen walks, I've seen sapsuckers there. Uh, the best place to see them is right in Wildflower Woods by the uh, Norway spruce. Um, here's a power line cut. Um, it's in danger of changing drastically because of invasive plants. Um, this is already corrupted. Um, just out of sight from this photo is uh, porcelain berry growing. Um, you could see here's some trees covered with it, uh, bittersweet. And um, in, the, in the spring, on the left side by these white pines, there was a bunch of oaks. And when the sun hits that, that's where the warblers will get active. And I've done very well there. Um, common yellow throats breed in there. Uh, kingbirds breed down there. That's next to the swamp a common breeder at T-Town now, probably more common than when I started there, great crested flycatcher. Black and whites, there's one or two hanging on, uh, probably down in that swamp area. Uh, prairie warblers, it's pro they're probably one of the most, uh, for Westchester County, one of the higher success rates. If you walk up T-Town Hill, um, cross Griffin Swamp, go up the other side on the power lines. The power lines uh, bisects right through T-Town. So it's, it's over a mile on power lines, maybe two. And um, seeing uh, prairie warblers uh, breeding season is very common. Um, cuckoos nest at both uh, Cliffdale and, and T-Town. And uh, if you go out on a, a threatening day, rainy day, they like to call. So you have a better chance of hearing them and locating. And I had at least um, two different ones up at Cliffdale calling um, that probably two different territories. And black-billed cuckoos uh, have nested there. Um, usually um, Hidden Valley was the place where I found them. Um, a bit, V varied thrush used to be very common. There's a couple of spots um, by the power lines that you could still find them. In migration, uh, on the power lines with the goldenrod, it's great for Nashville warblers. Um, Cooper's hawks. Uh, one year I found three different Cooper's hawk nests. And one thing I had trouble finding that year was, uh, was robins and uh, larger birds. Uh, fox sparrows, uh, the power lines. Um, earlier in migration, there's a, a, a lot of um, d dogwoods, and they love their berries. This is taken on the power lines. Um, there's a lot of old and decaying trees, so you'll you have good opportunities to get good looks at uh, pileated to T-Town. Uh, oven birds are still there. Um, it is birding the, the power lines. And you could see in the back, you could see the Aurelia. And it's great berries, but it's not providing food for insects. And this used to be a tree, and it's covered with porcelain berry. Um, but there's still enough uh, other native stuff, blackberries and, uh, and some sumacs and stuff. And the trees on the edge are pretty intact. Um, here's another view of the power lines. Um, going up towards T-Town Hill by the lake. And in migration, I've, I've pulled uh, a lot of warblers out of here, um, Canada warbler. Uh, uh, Perula warblers um, are very common in migration there. That's taken from T-Town. 
and uh, field sparrows still nest on the power lines. Um, Broadwing hawks breed at T-Town and uh, yellow warblers breed um, on the power line some years. Um, a fairly common breeder is, uh, is yellow-throated vireos and uh, some of these should have been cut. And this, uh, uh, this is a young raven begging and uh, they are fairly regular at T-Town, possibly breeding up on one of the power lines. Um, towers and more prairies. A blue wing warbler is still a fairly common breeder there. If you go there in June, early in the day, you could hear them singing on the power lines, or some people can hear them singing. I'm hoping next year I can. Um, and a uh, yellow warbler, um, yellow warbler is young, and you can see they probably had to rebuild a nest uh, because of a cowbird egg because it's a double high nest. And uh, this is a shot of, uh, of a prairie warbler on power lines that was battling for territory with another prairie warbler. And he got tangled up in thorns. And if I didn't come along, you can see a little thorns here, it probably wouldn't have been able to free itself because it took me a little bit to get it out. You know, so you never know what you're going to see when you're out there. An indigo bunting's nest along the power lines. Um, T-Town Hill is probably the better spot to see them. Uh, blue wing again. Uh, Grosbeaks beaks along the power lines. And this is um, the restoration they did in wildflower woods. So they planted a lot of native plants here. This was to keep uh, geese and other deer out of there all this crisscross and this is the lake in the back and a boardwalk that runs through wildflower woods and the blind is in this back area here and this fills up with the uh, forget-me-nots you could see some right down here and um, you could see uh, uh, half a dozen a dozen hummingbirds here battling for nectar and they've, they've planted some uh, some salvia there too, another good nectar source. Um, along the power lines is good for magnolia water bullets migrating. And um, I believe Anne has gotten a golden wing warbler at T-Town. And that was up by the Aurelia Forest. And one year I had one calling for over a month there. And when I first started going to T-Town, they had a number of Brewster warblers there. So it's an indication that there was some uh, some crossbreeding going on, and uh, it's um, there's a number of bluebird boxes. That, uh, if you could just uh, camp out by the boxes, if you do photography and uh, uh, get bluebirds, I've had chats there on the power lines a few times. Um, I find early in the morning when the sun sit in the oak area, there'll be more active feeding. Um, but you got a good shot at them. Um, good for migration, and it could have been a bre breeder. Um, also, solitary vireos. Um, I, my best spot for them is either lakeside or um, or down uh, by the wetlands in uh, below Vernet Lake. Uh, purple finches. This is uh, taken at Tea Town. Um, they they're along the power lines. Um, looking for food they can be fairly regular there this is also on the power lines eating some uh some multiflora rose berries and again cuckoo sap suckers may become a breeder in t-town um they're uh they're breeding in other parts of westchester now and uh they're very common in the winter and this one was probably feeding on these berries to the left, which I think is Virginia creeper. And prairie, blue wing, um, red-eyed barriers used to still breed at T-Town, uh, used to be fairly common. Um, all the flycatchers probably bred. And at the time, I wasn't that good of a birder um, when there was um, really beautiful stands of hemlocks. And uh, 
and Indigos. Um, Cerulean, we've seen them over by Vernet Lake also. Um, they like oaks. Um, this one, this shot was actually taken at Clipdale Farm. Um, it hung out for a few days. And uh, Tennessee uh, warblers are, uh, are common in migration, especially in Aurelia. Um, wood thrush still nest there. Orchard Orioles uh, are both at uh, T-Town and Cliffdale. Uh, I believe they bred at Cliffdale. Um, and again, with the, um, with the goldenrod in um, October, a good time to look for Nashville warblers. And uh, not too common anymore, um, uh, red starts uh, breed at T-Town. And uh, this is up by the Aurelia Forest. Uh, yellow belly flycatcher. And uh, this is next to the blind at uh, T Town Lake. Um, Aurelia Forest, you can see the thorns on that. It's perched on uh, a branch. And again, Aurelia. So if you, uh, you want to wear boots and you want thick pants, um, it's, uh, there's no maintained trail. It's just uh, for access to uh, Con Ed. And so uh, you can walk up pretty easily to the last tower before the steep hill, and there's a rarity up there. And, um, and there's also other invasives. That's a big problem at T-Town because this, they're feeding. This is uh, winged euonymus, and they're feeding on the berries in the fall. So this bird is actually eating the berries, the uh, red Iberio. But in the spring, there's no insects that are eating it, so it's not supplying the caterpillar high-protein food that the birds need. And, and that's probably the biggest change since I started going to T-Town in the 80s. And uh, here's uh, another um, uh, orchard oreo. And the Aurelia Forest, again, too. Um, you'll see uh, a number of thrushes and, and warblers there. Uh, is wood thrush, and these, these were taken. Those were taken this year. Um, another Tennessee, and uh, again Aurelia. It's crack for birds, you know, but um, only one time a year. Uh, that's that's it.